it clearly isn't the trend just yet, but Bob, what are we seeing in terms of companies bring production and resources back um, onshore? Well, I think they are doing that on a, on a small scale. They've discovered that some things that they moved offshore really are better made here. And we're seeing a strong demand for some of the products that the U.S. is good at making. Uh, the automobile industry, where we're relatively strong, is coming back. Uh, the housing market has some glimmers of recovery. There's very strong demand for oil and gas equipment and mining equipment. Uh, so in all those areas, companies are seeing fit to invest more in their U.S. factories. And what does this mean for jobs and for, for employment? It's modestly helpful. Uh, there were about 50,000 manufacturing jobs created last month, and the, the number of manufacturing jobs has been growing again for the past couple of years after shrinking by one-third over the previous 15 years. So we're getting some modest help there. But of course, companies are also investing in equipment that means they don't need to hire too many more people. You know, Bob, it's hard at some point. I guess it depends on what industries you're talking about, perhaps, because we still hear so much from companies where the only growth they're really reporting is in emerging markets. We hear even smaller companies now looking to emerging markets as a source of growth. So is it that that demand pattern is changing, or is it just that the, that the calculus of, of the cost in the production is changing? Well, I think most of the big global companies, obviously, are still investing full steam ahead in India, China, Brazil. Uh, but they're also investing in the U.S. And at the moment, India and China are a bit slower, so companies are seeing, and Europe, of course, is in bad shape. So companies are saying, at least for the next six months or so, the U.S. is uh, one of our best bets. Are there any places in particular, parts of the country, or um, some of the companies that you mentioned where you can kind of give an example of them walking through this decision process to bring some of the stuff back home? Well, I think generally they look at where are we selling these goods? Um, and let's produce it near where we're selling it, near where our suppliers are. So if the sales are mainly going to be in North America, and if it's a, an item like a, uh, an excavator or a giant engine for a train uh, that you don't want to ship around the world, you might want to make it here. If yeah. it's an iPad, however, it's a lot cheaper still to make it in China. And some of the, you know, the, what you need, the skills, the knowledge, the technique to build that, also a lot of that is in China or is in Asia, um, That's right. along with other operations. And the U.S. can try to bring some of that back home, but it's going be, yeah. <laughs> to be an uphill climb. I think that really interesting story, which was in the Wall Street Journal a few days back, was about the movement out of Ontario, Canada. Uh, I think it was in London, Ontario, Ontario which was the engine locomotive manufacturing of... Uh, I think it was Caterpillar's uh, <laughs> subsidiary, which they've moved. They basically shut it down. They did a, a lockout on the strikers, and they're basically moving all the manufacturing to one of two pl uh, other plants, one of which is in Mexico, and the other which is in the U.S. Do you think it's because there and are it, sort of union conditions have relaxed yeah, a little bit? Yeah, no, I mean, it was no, it was quite the opposite. Basically, they moved it to a, a non-unionized non plant that's in the I mean. U.S. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's my story. They're moving to... Uh, some of the production to Muncie, Indiana, and they, the wages there are about half what they were at the unionized plant in London, Ontario. Yeah, upstate New York, my, you know, where I grew up, you could see the same thing happening where at some point wages do get low enough to a point that it becomes competitive again.